Hi, I'm Dr. Madison. I'm a pulmonary immunologist at the University of Alabama Birmingham. And Ms. Russell has asked me to give you a little bit of a snapshot um, into what a basic scientist like me does on a daily basis. So I'm going to show you some of the experiments that we do in our lab um, as it pertains to cigarette smoking. So I study the lung. I'm a pulmonary immunologist, so I study the lung. And we're interested in how the immune system drives lung diseases associated with cigarette use. And so to do that, um, we actually implement or use a mouse model of cigarette smoke exposure. And I'm going to show you, show you a couple snapshots on how we expose the mice and then what we do afterwards to see how um, smoke causes damage in the lungs. Um, and it'll give you kind of an interesting look into um, alternative career paths in science. Um, away from the clinical side of things, um, as far as a physician or nurse, um, it's a unique field. Um, I love it. Um, it's full of ups and downs and excitement. Um, but really what basic scientists like me want to do is to understand how um, disease and how um, exposures like cigarette smoke changes um, cell function, tissue function, um, so that we can better design um, therapeutic strategies and hopefully prevent disease later on. So we're anytime you have a medication or anytime you have some sort of therapy, there has been a lot of research that has gone on behind the scenes that has led up to that therapy entering the market to consumers. Um, and so it's important to understand that people like me um, who seek to understand disease um, are really trying to find better cures better medicines um, for the future. So today I'm going to show you um, how we um, test those potential therapies, how we look at damage associated with cigarette smoke um, as it pertains to the lung. Um, and so you can get a, kind of get a snapshot of what a scientist does um, on a daily basis. So this contraption is our smoke exposure system. So how it works is we have a carousel uh, with up to 24 cigarettes and there is a suction uh, here that allows for the cigarette smoke to be puffed. Basically when it comes to a cigarette it will puff on that cigarette. The smoke will be puffed into this chamber first and there's a system of pumps here that allows the smoke to be pumped into the chamber where the mice are held. So for most of our experiments we do 24 cigarettes per day. Um, we have the capability of putting up to 16 mice in these chambers. Um, and there's little wedge wedges for each chamber um, where we can put the mice into um, each little wedge so to get equal amounts of exposure. Um, and so you kind of see the smoke coming out there, puffs into the chamber. And then we do these 24 cigarette experiments five days per week. Over a four to six month period. So these are long term experiments that we do. The mice come in every day, they get their 24 cigarettes of exposure, and then they go on their merry way. Okay, welcome to my home away from home. This is my lab bench. So, following the four to six months of smoke exposure, uh, one of the primary readouts that we look at is damage to the lung tissue itself. So we're going to look at how smoking damages the lungs and characterize how we can prevent that from happening. Um, and so one of the things we do is something, a term called histology on the lungs. Histology is, as its name suggests, the study of tissues or groups of cells. So we, all of our lung tissue undergoes histological analysis fo following smoke exposure. So here, I'm not going to show any actual um, necropsy or us taking the lungs out of the mice because it's a little more gruesome. Plus, we don't have any mouse um, sacrifices or going on at the moment. Um, but I do have some um, tissue from an old mouse experiment that we did previously. Um, and so this is a um, mouse lung here. Um, usually, they're pink in color when they first come out of the, um, the mouse. But what we do is we actually perfuse 
the lungs, and that just means we stick a syringe in the heart of the mice. Once they're euthanized, these mice are already dead. So, um, And then we push the blood all the way out so that the lungs become very white. So they lose their pink color because there's no blood in there. Um, and it just helps with us looking at the tissue later on. So that's why these lungs are white in particular. Um, so these are mouse lungs. When, we, when you open up a mouse who has um, passed, uh, what you'll find is their lungs are collapsed because there's no air going in or out. So what we do is we actually take um, a syringe and we fill the lungs with something called formalin, which is a fixative. So it basically locks the tissue in place and it doesn't decompose, prevents it from decomposing. So most of you have probably heard of formaldehyde if you've ever done a dissection and it has that smell. Formalin is a very similar to formaldehyde in that it fix, fixes the tissue in place and we can look at the tissue later um, without it decomposing. So once we have the tissue like this, we go through a, several steps of processing the tissue. Um, and ultimately what that ends in is something called a paraffin block. So here um, we have embedded that, this, this tissue here into this block of, of a wax called paraffin. So this allows us to slice the tissue into very thin slices. So you can see the lung embedded in that wax-like material. <clears throat> and you can see that well, once we have it embedded in this wax, it makes it very easy for us to slice it and stain it. So this is just a slice of some, some lung sections um, from a previous experiment where we were interested in looking at the changes in the lung structure or histology of the lung um, in response to a various treatments. Uh, so this is a lung that has been sliced very thin, placed onto the slide, and stained with something called hematoxylin and eosin, which is a basic histological stain that will allow us to look at the changes in the cells and the tissue um, in response to uh, smoking. So once we have the tissue on the slide and it's stained, we can actually take it over to the microscope and do and look at the, the structural changes um, that smoking um, induces. So here we have our typical microscope, um, and it's connected to um, a computer here that we can actually pan through the lung tissue itself and see what changes are occurring in the lung tissue. Um, and I do want to show you some examples of, of some changes that happen during cigarette smoke exposure. So here we have a healthy lung. Um, this is a lung tissue from a mouse that's been air exposed, so only received air. And you can see that there's a lot of these circular-like structures throughout, here and here and here. So these are actually called alveoli. And alveoli are important for you to be able to breathe. They're, they're basically these sac-like structures that are very, very thin and they allow the oxygen to be transported from your lungs to the blood to be transported to your cells in your body. Um, so it's very important that these remain intact um, so that they can actively transport oxygen to the blood. What we see in cigarette smoke exposure is that the alveoli become damaged. You see larger circles, that, which means that the alveoli have been destroyed um, or degraded over time in response to the cigarette smoke exposure. What happens is we have a lot of recruitment of immune cells that happen, uh, that come to the lung in response to cigarette smoking, and they release a lot of proteases that degrade the lung tissue over time. I mean, this causes damage. It causes an inability to effectively breathe, and it causes a lot of cough. I mean, over time, smoke exposure causes a disease called COPD, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Um, and one of the defining features is this the structures here where you have enlargement of the alveoli um, this degradation that happens over time um, and so this is one of the primary readouts that we use in our lab to characterize the damage associated with cigarette smoking so i've enjoyed sharing my a little bit of my day-to-day -day with you um, hopefully you came away learning a lot about what it's like to do research or what it's like to work in a lab um, I'd love to share some ongoing experiments that we have going on, um, also some new techniques we're trying out. And once this virus, um, this pandemic is over, um, maybe I can do that. Um, be sure to be healthy, stay healthy, uh, and hope to speak to you guys soon.